What are you doing, Sally? What am I doing, Julian? I'm creating our magnificent template for today's Get High Valare video. Ah, excellent. Just watch this bubble writing. Yes, you're Day. far better at it than I am, I'll tell you that much. Well, I'm just showing off, really. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll now be... I've shown off, you see, it's just... It's, it's just going to go all wrong now, I'm showing off, yes. Pride before I <laughs> watch it. Yes. Before a crash and burn. <laughs> no? Well, that's all right to me. There we go, capital. Excellent. So, officially now, today is day 10 of Get High Valare Airfield Savers 2019. I haven't done that in any of the order that is written, but you get the gist, yes? Yes. Great. <laughs> Thank you, Sally. <laughs> Beauty. Oh, crikey. Uh, okay, so what I'm doing now, I've just got a few moments spare, is I'm reading the instructions. There aren't that many instructions, I've just realised. All of these are just other languages. So there's only one paragraph, and it's not even instructions. It's the history of the Medicopter 117, which is a version of the H-147 that the East Anglian Air Ambulance flies. So actually, all of the instructions are in picture format, so really not so bad. But before I get on with um, tackling my part, I just wanted to give you a very brief background of my, um, my flying, my journey into flying. I started flying after I was first of all a parachutist. I jumped out of my first aeroplane when I was 16 um, and the, the only reason I did that was to beat my brother who had just joined the army as a boy soldier. He was 17 and I was 16 and there was a parachute club close to uh, where we lived at Ipswich Airport and so I cycled up there one morning with my parents' permission. My dad had been in the parachute regiment so I didn't have an issue with getting parental consent and um, I jumped out of an aeroplane twice in one day just one day's worth of training, usually over a weekend, but it was a long summer day. And so my brother then came home from leave, from leave and I showed him my parachuting logbook and he went, no! And he was duly impressed and he took it well. And then two or three years later, I was at college and he went to pick me up on his way back from uh, leave of absence from the army. We went home and on the train, he showed me his private pilot's license. And I went, no! And I was duly impressed. And as a result, I began reading aviation magazines. I was still steeped in parachuting at that time. Um, and I'd got up to unstable exit, seven and a half thousand feet. But I was really interested now in the front end. And so I was lucky enough to get an Air League flying scholarship, which I'm grateful for to this day, because they started me on my journey to my own PPL that I then got a year or so later. Um, and that then got me into the RAF because I was running out of money to fund my own private pilot's license whilst I was at college. And so I gained um, a bursary from the RAF that gave me another six months worth of flying. And so I then joined the RAF as a fighter controller because they didn't have women pilots in those days, I was told in no uncertain terms. And I completed my six year short service commission as a fighter controller and then I was due to leave and I was going to train to be a commercial airline pilot. And literally within six months to go, the RAF turned around and said, we're now opening the doors to women to learn to fly, to be RAF pilots. I was bowled over by this idea. And so initially I just went to have a go at the aptitude tests, really not expecting a great deal of myself, to be fair. I'd been controlling these guys as if I'd controller. I knew what RAF pilots could do. And I didn't think I was up to, the, up to scratch. But I passed both aptitude tests for pilot and navigator. I ended up becoming um, the first woman to go through the RAF's fast jet flying training system. And I give talks on this topic because it's a long and interesting and somewhat political um, uh, matter. Enough to say here that I gained my wings on the Hawk and I then re-rolled as a search and rescue helicopter pilot and I gained my wings on the Gazelle and I went on to fly the Wessex. But because I then elected to leave the service for personal reasons, I, I didn't establish my wings. So I am not actually qualified to wear them formally because I needed to have spent six months on an operational squadron. So although I had this accolade of being the first woman to go through those doors where no woman had gone before and there were no toilets, that's part of my talk, um, I'm not really in the annals of history as having made it as a fast jet operational pilot. 
therein there fell a 25 year gap <laughs> within which I had children and had various interesting and entertaining other sorts of careers and I've now got airborne again this last year in a microlite, a cyclone something or other, you'll see it in the details down below and just the other day as you know I had a trip in a glider so I'm back in the air and aiming to stay back in the air through Get High Valare um, and the opportunities it will provide. That's my potted history. Now I'm going to carry on with this work. I'll let you know when I've done a bit of it. Thanks for watching.